Hi, uh, in this video I will show you how one could solve the first challenge from 2019 Flare on Competition. Uh, the challenge was called Memcat Battle Station and it's uh, the first of 12 challenges that was uh, in uh, 2019 edition of Flare on Competition. Uh, the challenge is fairly easy, so if you have done any reverse engineering before, I don't think you will learn that much from this video, but if you haven't done it uh, before, then yeah, maybe you will uh, see some of the tricks that can be used uh, to solve such challenges um, in the future. So I already have the challenge downloaded, uh, so let's see how we could solve uh, this first challenge. Uh, usually first you, you do with uh, having a challenge, you check what type of uh, file it is and we can do it in this case using the file um, program. And in case of this memcat battle station, it's a .NET assembly. So it will be easier for us to actually solve it because we'll have um, great tools to actually give us the almost identical to the source code that um, the challenge had originally. So yeah, that's uh, helps a lot. And for that, we will use uh, dnspy. I have it already open. So we'll just throw uh, memcat battle station into dnspy and let's just make it a bit bigger. So if you haven't used dnspy before, uh, dnspy is a .NET disassembler. Uh, it gives almost identical code as the one that was uh, written. So as I said, it's helped us a lot because yeah, we'll not have to deal with the assembly, uh, but we'll in this case, look at the C sharp code. And just maybe uh, one more thing before we start, let's just run this application. So we'll see there's some kind of splash screen. We have some animation and we need to uh, provide some code to actually uh, continue. Okay. If we did not enter anything, uh, we can't even press, but if we type anything, uh, it says invalid weapon code. So let's try to see uh, what actually um, is the valid code uh, for this one. So if you have it open, we can just uh, right click and go to the entry point. So we'll see where, where it starts. We have the main and actually uh, there's some standard stuff that sets some style and uh, there's a logo form and then the first stage form is created, it actually it passes to, to the run method. So actually this is the first screen that we see here. So let's just go there and see if we find anything interesting here. We have some timer click, so that would be for the animation of the cat. We have text change, so basically if, uh, yeah, so we can see this, uh, that if there is no text entered, the button is disabled and if the text is entered, the button will be enabled. And fire button click. So we see if the text we enter is rainbow, there's some things here, victory animation timer starts. So we can assume that actually the code for this stage is rainbow. And let's see if it's actually the case. So let's type rainbow and yeah, so we kill the we kill the cat, and then stage two is actually uh, presented. So let's go further. So we can assume that if stage one was stage one form, we can assume that stage two will be here. So let's just open here, and we have similar code as before. So we have enemy entry timer click tick. So it's actually uh, some kind of animation. Uh, okay, we have some more animation. There's nothing interesting really here. Okay, we have similar code that enables the fire button. So we, again, something has to be entered. But now, instead of just a uh, simple comparison, we have some actually uh, code here. Okay, we have also the comparison. So basically, we want to have this method to return true and this method will return true if 
an array will be equal with the values with those values that are here and how it being um, the array how the values in array are being generated so first we take the string that's being passed here and we can assume that it's actually what is entered here uh, it's converted to array of characters then we get the length and for each character in the in the array because we use the length we will what we will do we'll create array2 we will assign i so index of this character will be assigned to num and okay this is a copy of an array and we'll xor the original uh, original um, character with a value like this so it will be 65 plus i times 2 uh, and if you don't know xor is an operation that it's uh, the reverse to xor is xor itself so in order to get the original uh, entry that will in the result give those values we can also use X, XOR with the same values. We just need to calculate those values and we need to uh, yeah, do that. We can, we can use Python for that. So actually, let's just try to quickly write something in Python. Uh, so first I will just copy those values and we'll just assign them to an array in Python. Okay, so we have those values. And now what we need to do, we need to, uh, we can either generate a new second array with those values, or actually we can just write a similar uh, for loop uh, in Python and just sort those values uh, in, this, in this loop. So let's, let's try that. So let's just create a second array that will hold the result and let's just move it a little bit so we can see what's being done here okay so for i in range len of a so basically we'll iterate through each character of the original array we'll do b append and we'll take the character and we need to uh, take the oh we can yeah we can we can we have to take the value and we, we've will XOR with 65 plus I times 2 and uh, that will give us a value a number and then let's convert it to character again okay and let's just execute it so we have some some values so just to print it let's just join the characters and we have a bagel cannon let's see if that works bagel cannon okay looks like it works and we destroyed this our second cap so now we have a third one okay and again by similarity we can assume it will be in stage three we have uh, a bit more code here. We can see some base64 encode, base64 decode, get cut genetics. Hmm, interesting. Some animation again. Uh, that's not interesting for us. Text change as we saw before and is valid weapon code. Okay, so we can see it's a bit, uh, it looks simpler than uh, previous uh, code but let's see what happens here because the names are not really uh, saying anything here so we have cat genetics with which is uh, uh, get from this get cat genetics and if we go here we can actually see that it base uses base64 encode with the uh, field that's called prior we weapon code so from the name we can assume this is the code from the previous stage but actually we could uh, we could verify that in a moment okay so that's the value so we get that the cat genetics would will actually hold bagel cannon 
but it will be base64 encoded. Okay, and then we uh, we have some, we get bytes from this get uh, cat genetics. We get the bytes from our input. And again, we do something with that and it has to be equal with those value here. So it's a bit longer than before. So I guess uh, the password for this stage is also longer. So, okay, let's see what this initialize battle cat does. And it actually, uh, the name are really not suggestive here, but we have those two byte arrays and we pass it to another method, assign feline designation. Okay, and here it's something that actually might do something. So first we call this invert cosmic constants and we create an array from 0 to 256, probably it will be minus 1, so 255. And we just, what are we doing here? Uh, we take some value from our uh, array and we add the value from this newly generated array, cat fact. Okay, and this is just reverse. Okay, so we assign value to some temporary variable and we revert the, the bytes. Okay, so this is just reverse. And we do it 50, uh, 255 times. Okay, so it looks like some kind of initialization. So we start with an array with uh, values from 0 to 255. We take a number from uh, based on the previous number and our, uh, let's call it password from the previous uh, stage. Uh, and we uh, exchange those two uh, bytes in the array. Okay, and we return it after uh, we done 255 times. Okay, and then we do something similar. So for two indexes, i and j, and they start with zeros. We again use this cut fact. So we exchange the values, we exchange the values, and then we XOR it. And it might be actually uh, difficult to see, but it actually uh, RC4. It's an uh, maybe uh, obfuscated is too much uh, to call it, but it's uh, RC4 uh, written in .NET, uh, probably not very optimized, but yeah, uh, it basically does RC4 uh, conversion. And let's try to see it actually uh, uh, we can confirm some of that what we just found, but we just need to put some breakpoint um, maybe here. Okay, and let's try to debug. Uh, let's try to attach to our process. Uh, I'm just not sure if this application is 64. So I guess it's a 64 bit process. So let's just. Uh, run uh, dnspy64 uh, probably not that one uh, i need to just find okay it actually was that that one okay so let's just again attach to the process and we already see it so yeah i should already know when i didn't have it on on my list Okay, let's uh, write something here and just fire. Okay, and why didn't it break in? Okay, because it's not that one. It's not the stage two. We need stage three. So again, let's just put our breakpoint here. Fire again. And did it break? Something is. Okay, it did break. So we are in is valid weapon code and we can just uh, step through. 
So actually, I'm already after cat genetics. So let me just uh, move this uh, again. So I will just go into this cat genetics so we can verify. Oh, actually, I got some exception. I don't know why. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we found some bug. Uh, so let's just quit this and we'll just start from here. It's interesting. I uh, haven't seen that before, but yeah. So even the competition application have, have bugs. Okay, so let's just start this. Uh, I think the breakpoint should be there, but let's eat this here. Okay, so we need to go again uh, rainbow to step uh, stage three. Okay, bagel, cannon, and we are in stage three. So let's just try fire. Okay, and we are here. And if we just take this and add to, where is the add to watch? I always can't find it. Well, we can always do like this uh, view, window, watch, watch one, this, prior, code, ah, of course I can't uh, type, okay, and it's bagel cannon, so we actually assume correctly that it should be this value, but of course it's base64 encoded, so we have to remember if we uh, ever wanted to write a decoder. So let's see um, some more, uh, let's verify some more assumptions. This is just .NET code, so I'm just skipping that. And we are in this initialized battle cat. We can go in here and we have this uh, cat here and this is the base64 encoded bagel cannon. Yeah, it looks like that. And let's go in. We have this byte array. It's just actually um, a link query converted to array. So it should contain values from zero to yeah, probably 255. I will not just uh, scroll. And if we just go through some uh, some steps, we have this cat. So cat is actually this uh, bagel cannon, base64 encoded. Uh, we have some indexes, j and num, and we will just exchange based on this password uh, some elements in the array. So now we have j actually, what is j value? Uh, okay, it doesn't see j, it's actually probably optimized. Uh, does it see num? Yeah, num is uh, 51 in hex. But if we go into cat fact, then we have should have j and i here. And it's so, so it, it will exchange the value at index 0 with value at index 51 uh, hexadecimal. Uh, it will exchange the values. So after one round, we'll have two values exchange and we do it a uh, few more times and our RI gets some values uh, exchanged. And if we go till the end, we'll get the whole uh, RI uh, yeah, shuffled. That's the word, I guess. Uh, okay, and now based on that value in our data, we'll have our, uh, let's just clean this up a little bit. In data, we have this four letter word fire, F-I-R-E. And we'll, yeah, just again, exchange, uh, exchange the values based on indexes and XOR with the, the byte from the data will be XORed with this uh, S value, that's uh, yeah, the initial values. 
uh, we can break a little a uh, few times here uh, it should break inside but if not can I put the breakpoint here apparently not so let's just try to exit okay and now it will execute because this is a query so actually it will execute whenever someone actually calls those uh, bytes and yeah it will just exchange some bytes and soar with a value uh, so uh, if we see the B here will be the first byte so it's it's F and it will um, XOR with a byte from this initial array that we generated and as I said it maybe doesn't look like that but it, it's just RC4 and it's uh, uh, if you've seen uh, some implementation RC4 it's kind of obvious because we have this initialization of an uh, 256 length array and we exchange the values in this array uh, and then the, the whole encryption is actually also exchanging the, the byte values and this is fairly uh, common uh, to, if, if you see that it's almost instantly RC4 that's um, obvious that uh, this is the, the algorithm used uh, so in order to do that we actually could uh, mm, we have to write a decoder and uh, this bagel canon this prior weapon code is actually a code for rc4 because rc4 actually needed a, a code uh, to a password to decode and yeah actually i already wrote that uh, so let's try to uh, see uh, how would such decoder look like? Actually, uh, copied some code from uh, from online Python. Uh, found some RC4 Python script. Uh, so what we have it here. Uh, this is the data that we actually want to. Uh, be equal to so in our case this will be uh, our entry so here we'll just uh, we'll just convert it to characters key is base64 bagel canon and this is just basically mimics the same uh, code as we uh, saw in the .NET uh, application so we generate an S array we do the initialization that we exchange the values uh, this is nice in python that exchange can be done in one uh, expression and this is just a coding decoding phase and just at the end we just print out the the characters and this is fairly simple uh, there's not magic no magic here as i said it's uh, just basic rc4 <laughs> So let's just exit from this one and if we uh, call um, this decode Python and I don't have Python 3 here so let's see if it's Python 2 compatible it is and we got the actual password so it's defeat uh, them with love with underscore and let's see if it will actually work so actually I have to go through the stages again because apparently I killed my application so rainbow okay bagel canon and the longest one I just need to see it so I don't do any typos or maybe I can actually copy. Can I just paste? Yeah, defeat them with love. And, and I think I will still have a breakpoint. Where's our code? Yes, so we got the breakpoint hit. And, yay, love bomb. And we succeeded so we have the first uh, the first flag for the flare on uh, 2019 competition 
so this is how you could uh, solve uh, the first one. Uh, as I said, it was fairly basic. Uh, all the uh, challenges are increasing in difficulty. So the next one will be a bit uh, more difficult and again, even uh, more. So I hope you learned something from this video and uh, if you like it, uh, just yeah, hit the like button and subscribe and let me know if something was maybe not clear or something needs uh, more explanation. And see you next time on Flare on 2019 Challenge 2 Solution.